Hey, No Nonsense Know How here, and today's going to be a fast paced review video on the EcoFlow Delta Max. This is a 2016 watt hour battery backup slash solar generator. You can get them on Amazon for about $1,900 or $2,600 if you get the optional 160 watt solar panel. Now, if you saw my last video, that was on the Rock Pals 500 watt, and we couldn't power all too much with it. This thing is basically that on steroids. It weighs a whopping 48 pounds and has some of the fastest charging times of anything in the in the market. Like you can also, so this is 2016 watt hours. However, you can add two more batteries to it and create a battery bank of six, I think it's 6,048 watt hours. A lot of power here. We're gonna do a few tests on it and I'll show you what it's all about. Let's start by taking a look at the user interface. It powered up, you hit the power button once, it came charged at 57%. I haven't used this yet. Over here is the amount of battery left. So 99 hours it shows since we're not pulling any power at all. That should change though as we apply load. And up top you have your watts input. So if we had the solar putting power in, it would show how much is coming in. And then your wattage output. On the front, you have two USB A's, two USB fast charge ports, and then two USB C 100 watts each. To turn them on, you press that button once and that sends power to them. I really like that it shows an exact percentage of the battery because some units only show you like bars and you don't know precisely what it is. So that's nice to see. If we flip it to the side, this is where I already showed you you would hook up the uh, secondary batteries auxiliary on the opposite end we have six 120 volt outlets that can do a combined 2400 watts or 5000 watt surge you have a 12 volt cigarette lighter style and then two three amp uh, dc plugs which it comes plug for that too for charging this beast you flip this cover up and well it comes with the wall charger that can do 1800 watts charging so we're gonna we're gonna try that out but next to it you can see it's on fast right now you can actually slide this switch down to put it on slow or custom and then there's a bluetooth module in this so you can connect it to the app and be able to fine tune that charging so if say you only want to charge at a thousand watts since maybe you're running it through a surge protector that you don't want to blow the breaker off whatever the case you have full adjustability with that we'll go into the app later in this video and check it out this is your 12 volt charger so if you were driving down the road and you wanted to charge this with the cigarette lighter and then of course it comes with the solar panel cables too not going to be able to try that right now though since it's dark outside but hopefully tomorrow let's go ahead and plug this into the wall and see if it does indeed charge at 1800 watts or if it blows my 20 amp breaker it should not uh, right now we're still showing zero okay so 100 watts 250 watts so that's slowly ramping up the wattage input we'll check back on that a few minutes later and this is settled at 1179 watts input showing 59 minutes till fully recharged. So I like how that swapped over from hours to minutes. It's a dual use meter. They do advertise a charge time of only one hour to go from zero to 70% and then another hour to go from 70 to 100%. The fans have just kicked on and it's still ramping up. So I'm gonna give it a little bit longer. Those are nice and quiet. And while that's charging, let's take a look at the solar panel. It comes in a nice quality case that's not flexible and a waterproof zipper on there too. Well, water resistant. These look to be high quality and seem durable. They're actually flexible, so unlike a glass panel that you'd have to worry about breaking. And then the case has a hard backing inside, so you use these carabiners, clip it up, and then that acts as a kickstand. You can angle it toward the sun and adjust this as you need to. And when you're all done, it's a breeze to wrap it up, put it back in the case. That's been going for 10 minutes now, and our recharge time is showing 49 minutes, so that's pretty accurate there. Up to 66%, and still pulling just over 1,200 watts. You should always fully charge your battery bank before using it for the first time, but I'm going to go ahead and plug something in and see what happens. We got this 1,400 watt power stripper by Wagner. I'm curious if it will put power out when it's charging. My guess would be yes. And we'll go on low first. And okay, look at that. So our input is now at 1700. And, let's put it on high. We're, we're pulling 570 watts right now. Woo! 
so the input jumped up to tw <laughs> it was like 2200 watts input there and it's showing two hours recharge time now since we're pulling all 1300 watts out of this thing you might be thinking why the heck does that test even matter because i could just plug this into the wall why am i running it through the battery well let's say you were somewhere doing something critical and the power wasn't reliable like maybe in the philippines the power can go on off on off you could leave this run all your loads through this and then leave it plugged in and you'd have clean power which by the way this is a pure sine wave unit cleanest power you can get i'm going to go ahead and unplug this now let's pull our 1400 watts again this time goes down to 55 minutes it'll run this for and from what i was reading online other reviews that's a very accurate meter on there we're pulling 1428 watts with this all right well let's see if it can run something bigger than that like how about this titanium 125 amp flux welder i just picked up shield your eyes and let's watch this output I didn't get to see what it was. I guess I could just watch over here. It looks like about 1,800 watts. Let's, uh, let's crank it up some more. Oh, that's 2,500 I saw there. Okay, so that, that overloaded it. And this went into overload protection mode. I was cranked up at full wire speed and amperage, though. And that did reset itself. I just had to turn the AC outlets on. I'm going to run a few beads on normal settings and see how it does. That's great. Still at 67% too, that's awesome. I'm gonna have to say this thing's pretty darn powerful and so far I'm impressed. Went ahead and plugged this back in. We're showing 46 minutes till fully charged. So I'll set my stopwatch and see if that proves to be accurate. 45 minutes later, we're up to 94%, but this is still showing 27 minutes till charge. So we'll have to check back in a few minutes. I'll let there you... it is, less than five minutes later, it is up to 100%. So that just didn't prove to be too accurate once it got up fully charged. Next test is gonna be powering the refrigerator. We're gonna see how long this little guy can keep this full size fridge going. Because if you lose power, what's the one thing you're definitely gonna to wanna to keep working your fridge with all that expensive food in there and the compressor just kicked on you see we're pulling 116 watts so i guess we'll see how long that goes hi baby hi you doing a video yes we are actually hey you're gonna mess up the operation we're, we're powering the fridge with this battery bank real quick really yeah see how long it lasts how's wow. the beer is it cold super cold <laughs> Really? Oh, yeah. colder than usual? I would say so. Ah, putting out that pure sine wave. And if you guys heard the background noise, little chickies are starting to get big. Oh, yes they are. Gonna outgrow this tank real quick. We are 12 and a half hours later and it's down to 34%. See, it's pulling 162 watts right now. I think the ice maker's going. But uh, yeah, that worked well. You're not going to get a full 24 hours out of it, though. Unless you have a more efficient refrigerator, of course. A couple hours later, we're down to 27%. Took the fridge out of the equation, and we're going to go ahead and make some coffee. See what that does. Eight cups. Looks like she's pulling 1,100 watts, and the fan has come on. It took it down to 16%. You can see it's pulling 56 watts, keeping the coffee hot. Well, let's find something else to run this all the way down, and then recharge it. Yeah, what the heck, I guess we'll just toast some air. There's one side, 800 watts. Both sides, 1,700 watts. It's showing nine minutes till dead. That was legit 10 minutes of runtime on a toaster at 1,600 watts, and we're down to 3%. So I'm going to stop now, and we're going to try some solar charging out. Only problem is, it's a very gloomy day out, so I don't know if we can pull any power. But I still set the panels up toward where the sun would be, and connecting them's a breeze. You just snap these together. These are IP68 waterproof. Can't hook them up backwards. They are male and female. And look at this. Even with no sun, we're still charging 21 watts. That's awesome. So let's, uh, we'll come back in a little bit and see if it goes up any percentage. A couple hours later, it's still overcast, but it got a little bit brighter. And we're pumping, look at that, 62 watts in, and it's up to 6%. So that's not bad for a gloomy day. Let's try out some 12-volt charging. I got this fully charged jump pack, but it's a pretty weak unit. It barely even jumps a car. Still got 12 volts though, and you know what I'm curious, how low will it run that down before it stops pulling energy from it? So 
could probably just look it up, but we'll find out. That said, all that 86 watts of input, and we'll check back shortly. That ran for about 45 minutes and brought it up to 10%. See, we're down to 10.2 volts on the battery, and then it will switch off around 10.1. There it goes. It switched off, and then as this battery current rises back up to 11.5, it tries again, and it will just keep doing that. But every time this runs down to 10.1, it stops charging. And that's a good feature to see because that means if you leave this plugged into your car, forget about it. It might bring it down low enough where you can't start your vehicle, but it's not gonna murder the battery. I went ahead and downloaded the EcoFlow app, which was a breeze to set up. Just follow the prompts, couldn't be any simpler. And check this out, you have access to everything going on. You also have what's called X-Boost. So if you want to pump out more power, but at the loss of voltage, you can confirm this, and then I think it puts out up to 3,400 watts. However, if you're running like sensitive electronics, you would want to leave that off. Running the hair dryer, or toaster, or high wattage things, then you might need it. Uh, you go over to settings and check it out. You can make all sorts sorts of adjustments. So let's say you were doing a car input, and you're like, I only want to put in four amps because it's overloading what I'm running it through the wires what have you you can do that and also since i have the adjustable ac input uh, switch switch on the back so right now it's doing 400 watts i could swing that up to being 1800 watts look at now we see the inputs going 600 639 682 710 pretty sweet app that certainly will come in handy and i think that'll wrap up my initial review on this unit haven't had any sunny weather yet, but I have no doubt that these 160 watt panels will push that because even with the cloudy weather, it was going up to 100 watts at some points as I was watching it. I think it's really cool that this can take 800 watts of total solar input, uh, anywhere from 11 to 100 volts. So you could wire up two 400 watt panels to this. That's why this is so much more than just an auxiliary battery because it has that advanced solar charger in it. Everything's built in. When you plug it into the wall, just a regular cord, you don't have any brick, charging block, nothing. Everything's in one little block here that's expandable. I think it's really gonna come in handy for me and the projects I'm always working on. Sometimes I'm on site working on vehicles. Uh, I could see somebody who has a cabin in the woods loving this, or if you live in the city and you can't be running, say, a Honda 2000 watt generator, because there's nowhere to put it or you're up on the 10th story of an apartment building this is going to really come in handy for you when you have a power outage so if you've been looking for something like this i give it a big two thumbs up five star review so far and i'll let you know in the comments how it holds up in the long run if you have any questions feel free to ask me there's also some really other good review videos on this unit so i'll drop a link to my favorite one down below hopefully i covered everything in this sorry if i missed anything and thanks for watching if you watched this far Hope to see you in another video. No nonsense, no how. RRM, over out.